Imagine someone approaches you with the simplest gambling proposition you've ever heard. They pull out a coin and say, I'll flip this coin until it lands on heads. If it takes just one flip, I'll give you $2. If it takes two flips, you get $4. Three flips, $8. Four flips, $16. The pattern continues. With each additional flip, your payout doubles. No matter how long it takes, you'll walk away with some money. It sounds almost too good to be true. There's no skill involved, no trick, no catch. You literally cannot lose money. The worst case scenario is that you win $2. The best case scenario? Well, there is no upper limit. If you get incredibly lucky, you could walk away with millions, billions, or theoretically infinite wealth. So here's the question that will break your brain. How much would you pay to play this game? Let's call this the infinite money game, though mathematicians know it as the saint. Petersburg Paradox, named after the city where it was first formally analyzed in 1738. The setup is elegantly simple, but the implications are mind-bending. Here's exactly how it works. You flip a fair coin repeatedly until you get heads. The number of flips determines your payout according to a simple formula. If it takes n flips to get heads, you win 2 to the power of n dollars. Let's trace through some examples to see what this means in practice. First flip is heads. You win $2. Second flip is heads. You win $4. Third flip is heads. You win $8. Fourth flip is heads, you win $16, and so on. If you're incredibly unlucky and it takes 20 flips to get heads, you'd win over a million dollars. If it takes 30 flips, you'd win over a billion dollars. The mathematical beauty of exponential growth means that even extremely unlikely outcomes can produce astronomical payoffs. There's always a chance, no matter how small, that you could become the richest person in human history from a single game. To determine how much you should pay to play this game, we need to calculate its expected value, the average amount you'd expect to win if you played the game many times. Expected value is calculated by multiplying each possible outcome by its probability, then summing all these products. It's the mathematical foundation for every rational decision involving uncertainty, from insurance policies to investment strategies. Let's break down the infinite money game systematically. Round 1. Heads on first flip. Probability. 1 half or 50%. Payout. $2. Contribution to expected value. One half times $2 equals $1. Round two. Tails, then heads. Probability. One fourth or 25%. Payout. $4. Contribution to expected value. One fourth times $4 equals $1. Round three. Tails, tails, then heads. Probability. One eighth or 12.5%. Payout. $8. Contribution to expected value. One eighth times $8 equals $1. Round 4, 3 tails, then heads. Probability, 1 16th or 6.25%. Payout, $16. Contribution to expected value, 1 16th times $16 equals $1. Do you see the pattern? Every single round, no matter how unlikely, contributes exactly $1 to the expected value. This isn't a coincidence. It's the mathematical heart of the paradox. For any round n, the probability of reaching that round is one half to the power of n, and the payout is two to the power of n dollars. The contribution to expected value is always one half to the power of n times two to the power of n, which equals one. Since there are infinitely many rounds possible, the total expected value is one dollar plus one dollar plus one dollar plus one dollar and so on, which equals infinity. The expected value is infinite. Here's where things get weird. If the expected value is infinite, then mathematically, you should be willing to pay any finite amount to play this game. $100? Absolutely. $10,000? Still a bargain. $1 million? According to the math, you're getting an infinitely good deal. But here's the paradox. Virtually no one would actually pay even $100 to play this game, let alone their life savings. Why? Let's examine what actually happens when you play this game. Despite the infinite expected value, the reality is far less exciting. 50% chance you win only $2, 75% chance you win $4 or less, 87.5% chance you win $8 or less, 93.75% chance you win $16 or less, 96.875% chance you win $32 or less, there's a 97% chance you'll walk away with $32 or less, and only a 1.5% chance you'll win more than $100. The vast majority of the time, you'll be deeply disappointed with your measly payout. Let's imagine you're a mathematician who trusts the expected value calculation completely. 
You've just heard about this game, and you're convinced it's the opportunity of a lifetime. You decide to sell your car for $30,000 and find someone willing to run the game for $30 per play. With 1,000 games, you figure you'll surely see some of those massive payouts that make the expected value infinite. Game 1. Heads on the second flip. You win $4. Not great, but it's just the beginning. Games 2 through 50. Mostly small payouts. You're starting to feel uneasy, but you trust the math. Game 87. Finally, you flip tails 12 times in a row before getting heads. You win $8,192. This is more like it. But your celebration is short-lived. Over the next 913 games, you mostly see small payouts again. That one big win gets eroded by the cost of playing. After 1,000 games, you've spent $30,000 but won only about $25,000. You're down $5,000 on a game with infinite expected value. Frustrated but convinced you just need to play more, you sell your house for $3 million. After 100,000 games and two sleepless days of coin flipping, you're down to $1.58 million. You've lost $1.42 million on a game that mathematically guarantees infinite returns. How is this possible? The answer lies in understanding what infinite expected value really means. The phrase infinite expected value is mathematically precise but practically misleading. It doesn't mean you'll quickly become rich. It means that if you played the game infinitely many times, your average winnings would eventually exceed any finite number. But the growth is agonizingly slow. Let's develop a practical understanding of how your average winnings actually grow. Suppose you play the game 64 times. Based on the probabilities, you'd expect about 32 games to end with $2, total $64, about 16 games to end with $4, total $64, about 8 games to end with $8, total $64, about 4 games to end with $16, total $64, about 2 games to end with $32, total $64, about 1 game to end with $64, total $64, about 1 game to end with $128 or more conservatively, $128. Your total expected winnings would be about $512, giving you an average of $8 per game. Now suppose you play 256 games. Following the same logic, the first 128 games contribute about $1,024 to your total. The next 64 games contribute about $512. The next 32 games contribute about $512, and so on. Your total expected winnings would be about $2,560, giving you an average of $10 per game. Notice something important. Quadrupling the number of games from 64 to 256 only increased your average winnings by $2. This is extraordinarily slow growth. Through careful analysis, we can derive a remarkable pattern. If you play the game 2 to the power of S times, your average payout will be approximately S plus $2. More generally, if you play T games, your average payout will be approximately logarithm base 2 of t plus $2. This logarithmic growth explains everything. Let's see what this means in practice. 1,000 games. Average payout approximately $12. 10,000 games. Average payout approximately $15. 100,000 games. Average payout approximately $18. 1 million games. Average payout approximately $22. The growth is painfully slow. To justify paying $30 per game, you'd need your average payout to reach $30. Solving logarithm base 2 of t plus 2 equals 30, we get to approximately equals 268 million games. If you played one game per second, it would take over 8.5 years of continuous play before you'd expect to break even at a $30 entry fee. Even this analysis assumes you can afford to play 268 million games. In reality, you face the problem of gambler's ruin the risk of going broke before you see the theoretical benefits. Remember our mathematician who lost $1.42 million after 100,000 games? This isn't bad luck. It's a common outcome. The slow logarithmic growth means that even after playing thousands of times, you're likely to be behind your initial investment. The fundamental issue is that while the mathematical expected value is infinite, it's driven by extremely rare events. You need to be prepared for the possibility that you'll never see a truly massive payout, no matter how long you play. The St. Petersburg Paradox reveals a fundamental conflict between mathematical logic and human psychology. Even when the math is crystal clear, our intuitions rebel against the conclusion. This resistance isn't irrational. It's deeply practical. Consider what infinite expected value really means in the context of diminishing marginal utility. If you have $1,000 to your name, losing it would be devastating. 
winning an additional $1,000 would be life-changing. But if you already have $1 million, losing or gaining $1,000 barely matters. The game's potential payouts quickly exceed any practical value. What's the meaningful difference between winning 2 to the power of $50 and 2 to the power of $51? Both amounts are larger than the entire world's GDP. For most people, there's no practical distinction between these astronomical sums. In 1738, Daniel Bernoulli published his groundbreaking solution to the St. Petersburg Paradox. Rather than disputing the mathematical expected value, he introduced the concept of expected utility, the idea that we should measure the value of outcomes not in dollars, but in terms of their actual impact on our well-being. Bernoulli proposed that utility, happiness or satisfaction, doesn't increase linearly with wealth. Instead, each additional dollar provides less additional utility than the previous one. This is the principle of diminishing marginal utility. For example, if you have $100, gaining another $100 doubles your wealth and significantly improves your life. But if you have $100,000, gaining another $100 barely registers. The same dollar amount provides vastly different utility depending on your existing wealth. Bernoulli used the logarithmic function to model this relationship. Under his model, the utility of having X dollars is proportional to the logarithm of X. This means that utility grows much more slowly than wealth, making the infinite expected value problem disappear. Using Bernoulli's logarithmic utility function, we can calculate how much different people should be willing to pay. Someone with $1,000 should pay at most about $11. Someone with $100,000 should pay at most about $17. Someone with $1 million should pay at most about $21. These numbers feel much more reasonable than pay any finite amount. But Bernoulli's solution, while elegant, doesn't fully resolve the paradox. We can imagine a modified version of the game where your utility, happiness points, doubles with each round instead of your money. This creates the same mathematical paradox, but in terms of utility rather than dollars. The deeper issue is that the St. Petersburg paradox reveals the limitations of expected value as a decision-making tool. When we're dealing with infinite series where both positive and negative contributions can be enormous, our standard mathematical tools can lead us astray. This connects to the broader philosophical question of how we should make decisions under uncertainty. Expected value is incredibly useful for most situations, but it's not a universal solution. Some scenarios push us beyond the boundaries where our standard tools work reliably. Modern behavioral economics has provided additional insights into why the St. Petersburg paradox feels so counterintuitive. Prospect theory, developed by Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky, suggests that people make decisions based on perceived gains and losses relative to a reference point, rather than absolute outcomes. Under prospect theory, people are risk-averse when it comes to gains, risk-seeking when it comes to losses, more sensitive to losses than equivalent gains. This explains why most people would rather have a guaranteed $50 than a 50% chance of $100, even though both have the same expected value. The certainty of the smaller gain feels more valuable than the uncertainty of the larger potential gain. The St. Petersburg paradox violates all these psychological principles. It asks us to risk a significant certain loss, the entry fee, for a small chance of enormous gain. Our psychological makeup rebels against this proposition, regardless of what the mathematics tells us. The St. Petersburg Paradox teaches us something profound about the relationship between mathematics and human decision-making. Mathematics provides powerful tools for analyzing complex situations, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Expected value is an incredibly useful concept that guides decisions in finance, insurance, engineering, and countless other fields. But it's not a universal solution. Some situations push us beyond the boundaries where standard mathematical tools work reliably. The paradox also highlights the importance of understanding what mathematical concepts actually mean. Infinite expected value sounds impressive, but it describes a very specific type of slow growth that may never benefit you in practice. So, should you play the infinite money game if someone offered it to you? The answer depends on the price and your personal circumstances. If someone charged you $5 to play and you had plenty of disposable income, it might be worth it for the entertainment value alone. The chance of winning big, however small, could be worth the modest cost. If someone charged you $50 to play, you'd need to think carefully about whether you could afford to lose that money and whether the extremely small chance of a big payout justified the risk. If someone charged you $500 to play, you'd almost certainly be better off investing that money in something with more predictable returns. The St. Petersburg Paradox doesn't have a single 
correct answer because it involves both mathematical analysis and personal values. What it does provide is a framework for thinking about extreme risks and rewards, and a reminder that sometimes the most interesting questions are those where mathematics and human nature point in different directions.